Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to the EKG case for the week of May 13th, 2013. This week's case was sent to us from Perth, Australia by Dr. Pratiba Shinoy. And before we get into the case, I just wanted to let you all know about a fantastic website or blog that Dr. Shinoy is responsible for, www.emergucate.com. Check it out. There's some great EKG cases of the week and some other images and a lot of pearls and pitfalls and other things, which is great for clinical practice when you've got a little time, uh, little bits of information go a long way. And that's part of the idea behind this EKG series as well. So anyway, let's talk about this week's EKG that Dr. Shinoy sent. And here it is. It's a patient with, no, that's not indicating that the patient's old. AGE is uh, my abbreviation for acute gastroenteritis. Patient came in, I guess, with some nausea, vomiting, and some diarrhea, and a 12-lead EKG was obtained. I'm not sure if there is something else clinically going on that prompted the 12-lead EKG, but it was obtained, and here it is. And probably what's jumping out at you are these abnormal T waves. There's abnormal T waves in a whole bunch of leads, in the limb leads, and also in the precordial leads. And uh, you might be thinking that this is cardiac ischemia. <clears throat> Maybe the patient's having acute coronary syndrome, and that's causing the nausea and vomiting. Although, if there's diarrhea also, I'm not really sure how to explain that with cardiac ischemia. But actually, this T-wave pattern is actually very specific for a particular abnormality that we want to briefly talk about on this week's segment. You'll notice that there's kind of a biphasic T-wave pattern, not only in the limb leads, but also in the precordial leads. And... Uh, normally, when we talk about a biphasic T-wave pattern, especially in the precordial V-leads, most people start thinking about Wellens syndrome or Wellens sign, which is a pretty good sign of a proximal critical occlusion in the LAD, the left anterior descending artery. But normally with the Wellens sign, the T-waves go up and then down. And this is something that I oftentimes refer to as the reverse Wellen sign, because what you notice here is that the T wave kind of goes down and then it goes up. Uh, and again, um, V3 is an even better example. The T wave goes down and then up, which is a reverse of Wellens. If you look at a, a real case of Wellens that we see here, you notice the T wave goes up and then it goes down, goes up and then it goes down. And Wellens typically gives you either deeply inverted T waves or a biphasic T wave pattern in those mid precordial leads, V2, V3, and V4. And when you see the biphasic T wave pattern that is occurring in the reverse scenario, in other words, it goes down and then up, well, that actually turns out to be very specific for none other than severe hypokalemia. And that would fit with the acute gastroenteritis but, uh, you know, sometimes patients can have metabolic disorders, even in the absence of vomiting and diarrhea. And when you see this T wave pattern in those mid precordial leads, and in this case, you even see them in the limb leads, but, you know, especially in the mid precordial leads, when you see this reverse Wellens type of finding, you think about severe hypokalemia. Now, this patient's potassium was two millimoles per liter, or if you're using uh, units that we have here in the US, two milli equivalents per liter. Same type of numbers. The normal potassium is a minimum of 3.5 up to 5 millimoles or milliequivalents per liter. Uh, so with this particular reverse Wellens finding, this uh, biphasic T wave finding that we're talking about, we're not usually going to see this in the presence of mild hypokalemia. This isn't something that you see when the potassium is 3.4, 3.3. This is usually when the patient's in the low twos or in the ones, really severe hypokalemia. And what's going on here is that hypokalemia can cause ST segment and T wave ST segment downsloping and T wave inversion and then the big upwards deflection is actually a U wave. These are U waves. These are real U waves. You know, sometimes people get all uh, anxious about, you know, tiny little U waves. I've seen people say, well, there's a T wave, and oh my gosh, there's a little U wave. That's not a real U wave. A real U wave is when it gets as big as the T wave or when it goes even higher than the T wave. That's a real U wave. So these are real hypokalemia type of, of U waves in those precordial leads, and you see it down in the limb leads as well. Let me show you a few other examples. And we actually have gone through this before on the EKG video series, but I'm gonna show these examples again. 
Here's a patient with the potassium that, I, as I recall, it was about 1.6. This patient had some, some type of severe metabolic or endocrine problem and, and was wasting a lot of potassium. Take a look at this biphasic T-wave pattern. Once again, Wellens goes up and then down. In this case, the T-wave goes down and then up, and this is a big U-wave, right? Um, and uh, here's another example. The patient's potassium in this case was around 1.9 or 2. Once again, you've got this biphasic T-wave pattern in the mid precordiales. Out here in the limb leads, you just have a long QT or even T-wave flattening. So this for whatever reason, tends to be most prominent in the mid precordial leads. Here's another example. The patient's potassium here, as I recall, was about 2.2. And you see the T wave goes down and then up into a big U wave. Wellens would have gone up and then down. And out here in the uh, limb leads, really not all that remarkable, maybe a slightly prolonged QT. But in the mid precordial leads, it becomes very, oh, very, very prominent. Here's one more example. In this case, this patient has a fairly severe hypokalemia of around 2.0 in the presence of DIG toxicity. And we're not going to get into the rhythm. This is a DIG toxic rhythm. It's regularized AFib. You see the nice DIG effect, that uh, little hockey stick or Salvador Dali appearance at the end of the QRS complexes. But that's in, for another lecture. What I want to focus your attention on here is an electrolyte problem that is not uncommon when patients have chronic DIG toxicity, and that is severe hypokalemia. And in those mid precordial leads, how do you know there's severe hypokalemia? Well, you see the biphasic T wave pattern, which goes down and then up. And that is, let me get rid of some of these circles. Those are really good U waves there. But again, the T wave pattern goes up, down, and then up. Don't confuse that with Wellens, which goes up and then down. All right. So it's a nice T wave abnormality pattern that you can pick up and you'll know when your patient is severely hypokalemic an hour before you get the electrolytes back from the lab. You can look at that 12 lead EKG, just snap your fingers and say, this patient has severe hypokalemia. Get them on a monitor, maybe even start some magnesium while you're waiting for the formal potassium uh, level because most patients that are severely hypok are also hypomagnesemic and they're going to need some magnesium before you even uh, are successful in replacing the potassium. So anyway, it, it, it'll make you look like a star when you just look at that 12 lead EKG and you tell them, uh, you know, an hour before you get the lab to call you with the potassium level, you've already know the patient's got a low potassium. So it's a simple take home point from this week's uh, from this week's case, thanks to Dr. Shinoy. Um, and again, when you see that uh, T wave pattern that goes up and then down, in the mid-precordial leads, that's your classic Wellens finding, and that's LAD disease. When you see the T wave go down and then up, well, that is a big U wave, and this patient has severe hypokalemia. All right, so nice quick pearl for this week. I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.